Today we're going to be looking at object pooling. Object pooling is a pattern that creates some pre-instantiated objects that you can pull from the pool instead of instantiating the object when you need it. In Unity, instantiating an object and destroying it takes a lot of time. So if you're spawning a couple of bullets, I'm using bullets here, it's not so bad, but I'm going to turn this up to 60 per second. And now I'm instantiating, and you can see in my hierarchy over on the left that there are a lot of clones being created. And if I stop shooting, all those clones are very quickly being destroyed. This takes up a lot of CPU time. It's not so bad here when in, in this simple case, but if you've got you know, multiple bullets being spawned from the player, enemies spawning bullets, other objects being spawned, this can cause a really big bottleneck. So today we're gonna to implement an object pool that will pre-instantiate all these objects for us and mitigate instantiation and deletion of objects. So when I talk about instantiating and destroying objects, I'm gonna pull up the scripts where this happens. So this is my shoot script. It's very simple, it just fires the bullet at whatever direction the mouse is from the player. And you can see here on this line that I've got a new bullet instantiate. So that's gonna take some resources to create that bullet, populate the prefab, put it in the scene, and then we're gonna do some work with it. And then the on exit, so when I destroy them, I've got a little zone set up so that whenever the bullet leaves that zone, it gets destroyed. Or if I want it to hit something, like my red box, same thing. Something hits this and it destroys the object itself. So it, it removes this instantiation and destroying of objects gets very slow if you do it a whole lot of times. So first thing we need to do is create C sharp script. And we're gonna call it object pool. Open it up. We're not gonna use the start. We're not gonna use the update. So first thing I'm gonna do is create a singleton. So I can access this object pool from any other class without having to do a find component or tying it together in the editor. It's just another design pattern. I need a spot to hold my instance of the static object. So I'm going to say public static, the name of my class. I'm going to call this instance. So there's only ever going to be one instance in my scene at a time. And then in void, awake, I'm going to do if my instance is equal to null, I'm going to set instance equal to this. So what this will do is if this object wakes up and it's the first one, instance will be null and it'll set this object as the instance. Um, we can put a lot more logic around this to kind of stop multiple instances from being instantiated, but we're just going to control the scene and say, make sure we don't put multiple in. So now that we have our instance, we need somewhere to hold all of our objects. I'm going to create a public game object, and it's going to be my prefab. So this is the thing that I'm going to be spawning and, and hiding, and then somewhere to keep those. So I'm going to do public list game object and then call it pooled objects um, if you've never used a list before a list is just like an array except it has a lot more accessor functions into it and it will grow and contract as needed we don't have to reassign it to anything. We can just say add, 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 and the list will get bigger and bigger. And then we also need how many objects we want in our pool. So int, I'm gonna call this count to pool. And I'm gonna set this to 20 just to start. So we're gonna say we want 20 bullets in our pool that we can use at any time. If we go over 20, we won't have any more bullets. So we can we can change it up later see what happens, but let's get the simple case going. So we're going to start up and we need to instantiate our list. Pooled objects equals new list because the list is an object and it contains game objects. 
And then now that we have our list to hold our objects, we need to populate all of those objects. So I'm just going to use a for loop. Start at zero. I is less than count to pool, because that's how many we want to start with. I plus plus. And now here is where I would be instantiating those objects. This is where it's going to like pre-instantiate. Game object, object equals instantiate. And I'm going to say prefab. We don't care where it is or which way it's rotating or anything like that, because when we pass it to whatever requests it, that will deal with setting it up. Another thing we need to do is set it to be inactive. So it doesn't just you know, fly off into oblivion right at the beginning of the game. So I say set active, false. And this will just hold it in our pool. It won't be active. It won't be using up any, any cycles. We need to add it to our pool. So we say pooled objects dot add object. Great. So now we can actually put this in and run our game and we'll see all of these objects showing up. So I'm going to jump back into Unity. And I've got a game controller here. It doesn't have anything in it. You can use this for managers and whatnot. Things that don't have like a physical representation in the scene, but they still need to run. Count to pool, 20. We need to drag in our prefab. There's my bullet. Hit play. And we'll see now that I've got 20 bullet clones in the scene already preloaded but they're they're not active they're not doing anything they're all just kind of hanging out i can still shoot um, the old shoot script is still in there and you can see it down in the bottom creating creating clones this is what we want to avoid so let's go in and create a function that will allow us to get one of these pooled objects get a reference to it because our our object pool has all the references, so we won't need to do any kind of lookup. Let's say public. We're going to return a game object, get pooled object. And I'm going to iterate over my list to see if I have an available pooled object that, is, that isn't active yet. So I'm going to say for int i equals, oops, equals 0, i is less than pooled objects dot count. I plus plus. So now that I'm iterating over, I need to find one that is not active. So we can say if not pooled objects and get the index, which is in our I dot active in hierarchy. We'll talk about that in a second. I can return that pooled object. So now this active in hierarchy. Unity has a hierarchy of objects. Let me switch back here. So if I have an empty, and we'll call this my parent, and I add another child to it, let's say we add a cube. If the parent is active, but the child is not, if I say is active, it'll actually go up to the parent and say, yes, it is. But if I say active in hierarchy, then I can say, no, it's not. The inverse also applies. If the parent is disabled, but the child is enabled, and I say um, is active in hierarchy, this will return true because the cube is active, even though is active would return its parent saying false. So if we decide to put all our bullets inside of a parent object, we want to know if those bullets are, are active themselves, not the bullets parent. So that's why we use active in hierarchy. So let's jump back to our code. And so it's still giving us an error saying not all code pass return a value because if we find one, we return something. But if we don't find one, it's going to jump all the way out of this loop, and we're just going to return null. That tells whatever's requesting an object that, hey, there's none active. You can't do anything. So now we need to go in our shoot script. And where we instantiate our new bullet, 
we're going to replace this instantiate with an object pool dot instance. So this is the, the instance that's been spun up and get pooled object. So this is going to return a, a game object. This is going to, if this finds uh, an object that we can use, it'll return it. So we, add, but if it doesn't find one, then we need to check that. We say if new bullet is equal to null, we're just going to return and not do anything. But if we do find one and we get past here, we need to set its position. So we need to say new bullet dot transform dot position equals, and this is kind of the, the math I did beforehand, whatever shooting plus, I believe I called it fire angle. We just want it normalized. So it always comes from the same distance. And then we set the rotation by using the look at. And then the last thing we need to do is activate it because when objects are in the pool, they're deactivated. So we say new bullet, set active, true. So now the bullet's reaching into, fire bullet is reaching into our pool. If it pulls one out, it'll set its position and its rotation and activate it. If it doesn't find one, it's just gonna return. Now, if we play this, we've still got a pretty big problem, but you'll see that these clones are becoming active and then deactivating. But you saw the first few I shot, they, they got destroyed. They disappeared. So we need to handle our when they get killed. So I'm going to change these to say, instead of destroy, set active false. So wherever it is, whatever it's doing, just set it to not active and it, it kind of goes back into the pool. The pool still has a reference to it. It just says, hey, this is available to be used again. And we also need to do it in our on exit. False. So now if we go back and play, I start shooting bullets. You can see some of them are activating and then deactivating when they hit something. Actually, turn this up to full speed. So they're all active and I can't shoot anymore. So there's none left in the pool until something hits a wall. Um, older video games, I think Asteroids did this. You only got three bullets on the screen at a time. This is one way to implement that. You don't have any active uh, available bullets, so you can't shoot until one of them gets moved out of out of the game. Yeah, so our pool is working. We're not instantiating anything at runtime. We're not destroying anything at runtime. This is a lot more uh, CPU efficient. And that's that's pretty much object pooling. The next step is, let's say we, we don't want it to stop shooting. We want it to just keep creating more and more. Our pool isn't big enough, so we can dynamically expand our pool. So let's go back into our object pool. And I'm going to add another flag to this and say public pool can expand. And we're going to default it to true. Uh, let's default it to false. So now we can, we can set a flag to say, hey, is this pool locked to this many or can it get bigger if it needs to? So down here, if we get here, we know we need more, so we need to check if we need more. So if can expand, then we say, then we, we create a new one, a brand new one. This is where we're gonna instantiate. Same object, object equals, and then we're gonna say instantiate prefab. So we're getting a brand new one, not yet in the pool. And we're gonna do the same thing, set active to false add it to our pool. And then we're gonna return it so, so we don't need to look through the list again. We know this is the newest one. So this is what whatever is calling it is gonna get. But if we can't expand, it's just gonna skip over this and get a null. 
save that, jump back into Unity. So now if we look at our game controller, can't expand is false. We only have 20 objects. And if I start shooting, I've got to shoot a little faster than that. When I'm shooting, I can't get any more than 20. But if I go into the pool and I say, yes, you can expand, now I can just keep going. And it'll just keep creating more and more until we hit kind of a, an equilibrium. I can't shoot fat bullets faster than they're being destroyed. It looks like that's, that's about 65. Oh, we got up to 70. Probably shot into the corner. 71. So now we only ever have 71 bullets in the scene because they're getting destroyed just as fast as they're getting created. Um, but we never have to create any more now. Um, you can do uh, back offs. You could, you could slowly destroy objects in the pool if you wanted to make it a little more memory efficient if you don't think you're ever going to get back up to 70 again. Um, or you can just let them hang out there in memory. And that's it. That's You can use this for any number of, of objects. Just need to make a couple modifications for it. Right now, there's only ever one object pool in your scene. If you try and add two object pools, let's see if we can drop a second one in there. And even if we, we populate it, we say we want prefabs, whichever one is second, it's going gonna, it's gonna to overwrite the other one. So they're both going to populate, right? But I'm only ever going to be able to pull from whichever one is in that instance. Um, that's kind of the, the staticness of it. We should write some code to kind of get rid of these guys. But that, that's kind of a, an advanced topic. If you guys want to see more about this and a little more advanced object pooling, let me know. I would be happy to do a live stream of it or a tutorial. Go ahead and leave a like and a comment and tell me what you think.